Right then, welcome along everybody to European Racing Organization in Round 6. The Mystery Grand Prix has chosen Spa Francorchamps as our location for the race today. And we have just loaded into qualifying and awaiting some quick outlaps. Bit of a lowly grid today, only 12 joining us for the race, but a little less practice than normal. So we might see some uh, some interesting incidents for sure. And got some drivers looking to go out early. Of course, Spa being such a large track, it behooves a person to get out nice and early. And one of the Red Bulls is on his way out. Givano by the looks of it. So, what do we expect from a Mystery Grand Prix at Belgium? I feel like it's one that a lot of drivers do. It's pretty pretty common in the leagues to have Spa on the calendar. So, I think our drivers are going to be uh, quickly warmed up to the track. It's one they'll have ingrained in their muscle memory for sure. But there are a couple of locations that are easy to make some mistakes. And if some drivers aren't quite as warmed up, we might see some there. La Source is an easy hairpin to get wrong. Um, the bump on the inside of turn 10 Bruxels, the, the right-hander that we're going to come up to in a couple corners time, uh, can be a little tricky to navigate without a little bit of practice beforehand. And of course the bus stop chicane is always just that little bit sloppy without some warming up. So minor mistakes to be had, things to look forward to, but Giovanno already exploring the limits of the track, throwing his car into uh, turn 11 there, Jackie X. Through Poan then. And it's going to be a long outlap. The tires will be up to temperature. It's a nice sunny day. Uh, he's got his teammate right behind him, Raphael. Don't know if Raphael's going to want to overtake his teammate in Sector 3 before they start the laps. Or if he'll just sit behind. Into into the back section now, Blanchemont. A bit difficult to make some overtakes here. Track is nice and narrow. And of course the left-hander, absolutely flat in a modern F1 car. We're coming up to the bus stop. And out of just a couple corners, we will have our first flying lap of the day. With Givano in the Red Bull. As he rounds turn 20. And crosses the start-finish line to start his lap. With a charge up to La Source. And need to get a good exit out of La Source in order to carry all of the speed possible through Eau Rouge and the Camel Straight. Of course, that's where most of the top speed of the track is. Absolutely flat through Eau Rouge and Radion. And then it's a long, long drive all the way to Lacombe, turns 7, 8, and 9. Keeping his Red Bull to the left, ready to throw it in to the right-hander of 7. Down to 5th gear, nice wide chicane. With a right left and another right. Short run down to turn 10. Bruxels gets the car turned in. A slow downhill corner. Letting the downforce do the work through 11 as he throws the car in through Jackie X. Little twitch of the rear, but not going to lose him any time whatsoever. Just a lift and a downshift through Poan. Making sure to keep the car inside of track limits on the outside. And then through the campus corners. 13 and 14 that we're heading into now. 14 a bit tighter than turn 13, so drivers needed to, needing to take 13 just a little bit slower than they normally would, and that was a little bit of understeer coming out of turn 15 heading into Stavolo. As he just had to check up a little bit, keep the car from running wide onto the curb. But through Blanchemont we go now, and into the bus stop once more. For our first time of the day, hard on the brakes down to third gear. And not any wheel spin on the exit. It's a 41 flat for Giovanno. Has his teammate right behind him of Raphael. He's going to be coming through the bus stop now. Looked a little wide of the right-hander. Will compromise his exit just that little bit. And it's a 42-2. 
So already a huge variation in times between the two teammates. Uh, the Let's see, Alpha Tauri will be next, but he is starting a lap. Let's see here. The Ferraris will be across next. First will be uh, Christian. And he has a very Polish last name that I won't try and pronounce. With a 41-7 crossing the line. And his teammate... Where is he? Crosses the line with a 41-3. So the Ferrari is running 2-3, and three, splitting the two Red Bulls so far. We just... Saw a couple more people start their laps, Carlson being one of them. So we will hop on board with him real quick. On the short run down to Bruxels, doesn't really seem to have the whole car under him. So I'm struggling just a little bit through Lacombe and on the exit as well. Just feeling the grip for the first time today through Spa Francorchamps. Throws the car into Puan. There we go. That's a nice corner. And we'll see him go through the campus corners. Nice late apex through 13. Just have to take 14 that a little bit slower. Quick stab of the brakes. And throwing the car to the right for turn 15. Stavolo flat through 16 with the right line. And then it's flat all the way through Blanchemont into the bus stop chicane once again to finish off the lap. We see Otto in uh, fourth place in the Aston Martin. And I think one driver will be first across the line. That will be Herrera in, ooh, in the Alfa Romeo, but he is invalidated. So we'll head on back to Carlson. Who sets the provisional fastest time of the session with a 140.9. Just a under a tenth faster than Givano so far. And looking at the tracker. See the Haas went back into the pit lane here of Darius. And Otto will be on an in-lap. We've got the two McLarens out there. Bassett on his, uh, his out-lap. But his teammate Gaillard will be on an invalid lap as well. So he'll be back into the pit lane. And we will, yeah, we can pick up Matthew Bassett then on his outlap heading through uh, into Sector 3 now. So times ranging from the 140s to the 42s so far with only six laps on the board as it stands. A couple people on outlaps. 13 drivers in at the moment and uh, the longest track on the F1 calendar. So they'll be able to find some clean track as Matthew Bassett is starting his first lap of the day and he's already way wide of the apex through La Source. So says the camera angle. We'll just uh, see how much time he's going to lose down the camel straight then. It's through Eau Rouge and Radion we go. Hardly even feels like a corner in an F1 car, even with the low downforce setups that we see around Spa. But uh, take it in anything with a little bit less grip like a GT3 car and you realize how much of a corner that section really is. Heading into Bruxelles now, down to fourth gear and just trailing on the brakes, keeping his car slowed down and still turned in. That was an aggressive stab at the steering there into turn 11. Thought he was going to lose the car and have it go around on him, but keeps his McLaren under him through Poe and we go then. Carrying all the speed possible through there. Through campus we go now. Just modulating his throttle through the campus chicanes. Down to fourth for Stavolo. And flat through 16 once again. And he might just have a Haas right in front of him on an outlap, but I'm sure Darius will be uh, on his way shortly. Shouldn't be too much of a problem for Bassett. Breaking right after the 100 meter marker on the left. Through the bus stop we go. 
and plenty of throttle without much wheel spin. And that is the sign of a very nicely hooked up Formula One car, 140.9 for Matthew Bassett. Fastest lap of the session so far. Very nicely done indeed. Carlos Torres on an invalid lap, and I'm pretty sure. Let's see, Alejandro will be. Well, he's on the hard tire, so we won't really need to watch him. Let's see here. Hop on board with the Alpine of Simon Engel, then. This is a Williams. The other blue car. One of three. You know, next year's going to be even more confusing with the, uh, the RB sister team. Also taking up a blue livery. So that's great. We get half the field being blue. No one can think of any other color, I suppose. But anyway. Angle heading through campus now. And into Stavolo we go. Track map saying that he's setting purple sector times. Although I've, uh, I've known that to be a little bit inaccurate, so we will have to wait and see as he crosses the start-finish line. Angle in the Williams through the bus stop chicane. Early on the power. Heads up to the line. It's a P5 for him, a 41-4. Splits the two Ferraris as they stand right behind him was Darius. Heading through the bus stop now. A little wide of the second apex. And he will be setting a time good enough for P9, a 144.3. So some uh, some slight mistake, perhaps, out on track. Let's see here. Gaillard's on another fast lap. We can hop on with him real quick. Through Poan we go. Teammate has the provisional fastest time so far, though six gear through Poan. Is, uh, is not what I know the strategy to be. So just feeling the grip here in the Mystery Grand Prix. Not too keen on attacking the curbs either, but usually it's when I... when I scrutinize someone's lap is when they set one second clear of everyone else ahead of them, so... What do I know, really? Guy are just floating the steering wheel through uh, the left-hander at Blanchemont and through the bus stop chicane we go then. Not really seeing anyone get wheel spin on the exit of the bus stop, which is uh, surprising to me. That's so uh, it's usually where I always get it. But Gaillard up into P7, 41.6 for him. And I was just making sure that <laughs> uh, Darius didn't spin his Haas. So I'm... Uh, completely stationary through some yellow flags, but he's looking to be okay. And... Mm -hmm. Who can we pick up? Who is that Red Bull? It's Raphael, isn't it? There we go. Someone's got to be on a fast lap here. Ooh, but he's out of battery, and that's not going to bode well through Blanchemont. So I wonder if he's on an in-lap. I would assume that to be the case. Although he's eight tenths up on his previous best, might as well just finish off the lap and get a good banker. But he will have time to gain if he can get another run in. I know Spa is a very time-consuming track, and there's only four minutes left to go, so I don't think even if he pitted now, he'd be able to... No, oh, if he pitted now, he'd be able to. But if he stays on this lap, he won't. And he decides to bite the bullet and head on in. Right then. Only two cars out on track right now, as everyone is waiting... For the end of qualifying to set their final run. I'm going to take this opportunity and refill uh, my water reserves. Because I forgot to do that before we started.
All right then. As I get back, everyone is on their outlaps. Wonderful to see. Who's gonna be first though? That's always the question. Is it Torres? Is it the... Oh, I was gonna say, is it the other Alpine? There's not another Alpine. That's a Williams, the other blue car. So Angle will be the one leading us to the line here. Gonna be the first one to set a flying lap. Oh, that everyone's on an outlet. Wonderful to see. Just want to see what's going on here between these two drivers. Although it looks like uh, Alejandro's backed up just a little bit. Okay, head on back to Angle. And we'll have a nice flurry of action to finish off qualifying in the Mystery Grand Prix here in Spa-Francorchamps today. And Angle has a very clear track ahead and behind of him. And uh, can't really say the same about many other drivers, as they're all looking to set their laps at the exact same time. But here's Simon Engel leading us through a lap of Spa-Francorchamps. Breaking for La Source, bringing it down to third, and using all of the track available on the exit. And then it's the flat-out run all the way down the Camel Strait to Le Combe. Out of Radion he comes in. DRS open for the majority of the Camel Strait. All the way down to the Le Combe chicane. Nice wide corners, flat curbs. Always fun to take with an F1 car. A little squirrely on the exit there, but he's, uh, he's looking okay. Into Bruxels we go then. And he's carried in a pretty good amount of speed there. It's looking pretty good through turn 11, just a little wide of the apex, but that looks okay. Used all of the track available to it. Oh, that is an aggressive shot at the steering heading into Poan. But that's where the car is generating downforce, so... Possible to do plenty of grip in the car at that point in the track and he's just run a little wide on the exit of turn 14 as it tightens up just that little bit and He is uh, well put it in the wall in frustration. So let's hop on board with uh, the Red Bull of Givano instead Picking up where we left off with angle. So that would be p6 at best for Simon angle as uh, We're getting the worst camera shot known to man Givano heading through Blanchemont now. Just gingerly apply some steering through turn 18. And a clear run to the bus stop chicane. Someone is off at Poan. That is the Alpha Tower of Carlson, who's in a provisional P2 right now. So that does not bode very well for him. Givano, third place with a 40... Uh, never mind, he didn't cross the finish line yet. Uh, Givano, first place with a 40.7 and has his uh, his teammate right behind him by the looks of it. Raphael taking that provisional pull time with a 140.6, just a tenth faster. And then Matthew Bassett goes one more tenth faster for provisional pull with a 40.5. Alpine will be the next one across the line. Carlos Torres finishes P6, a 41.2 for him. And then this Ferrari is on an invalid lap. But we see Daniel in the Ferrari take a P4 with a 141.8, uh, excuse me, 140.8. And everyone has crossed the line at the same time, and that means that's the end of qualifying already. So, <laughs> Matthew Bassett, pole position with a 40.5, just a tenth faster than Raphael behind him. And then Giovanno in the other Red Bull. So it's a McLaren versus two Red Bulls. The two Ferraris close to each other, but they are split by Carlson in the Alpha Tower, who we saw was off at Poan on his final run. So he was provisionally P2, all the way down to fifth now, as everyone else had crossed the line. And we'll get the rest of qualifying after uh, this quick intermission. So Bassett on pull from Raphael and Givano. And it is Daniel in the Ferrari for P4. Carlson P5 for Alpha Tauri. And that is Christian P6 for the other Ferrari. Carlos Torres in the Alpine P7. Showed some really good pace in Las Vegas. 
But uh, down in P7 and qualifying at the moment, Otto right behind him, P8. Simon Engel, P9, all he could muster after uh, invalidating his final run through qualifying. Guyard in the second McLaren rounds out the top 10. Darius and Adam Bradshaw will be starting P11 and 12 for Haas. And uh, Alejandro Herrera, who also showed plenty of good pace around Las Vegas, uh, set pole position, I'm pretty sure, and then lost the entire race on lap one, if I remember rightly. Uh, not setting a lap time, starting P13 of 13. Well, we know Spa can have some inclement weather. Right now it's looking uh, overcast, but not raining by any means. So we'll see if that decides to, uh, to rear its head later on in the race. And a small grid with a large track usually means quite a bit of field spread. So I'm hoping for some good battles today. Uh, but the reality of uh, watching a bit of, of a procession so it's not lost on me, unfortunately. But we'll give everyone just a couple minutes to finalize their setups and strategies and whatnot. And then we will be going. Here we are then on the grid at Spa Francorchamps. Five lights are on and we are underway. It's a pretty good start from Bassett who already comes off to the left side of the track to cover off his rival. However, the Ferrari able to split the two Red Bulls ahead of him, got himself a pretty good start. And there is some uh, spatial distortions happening uh, in the background as cars are phasing in and out of each other, but it is a terrible start for the second Ferrari who's already got Gaillard in the second McLaren. Uh, up his rear diffuser. The two Haas cars of Bradshaw and Darius uh, also not having the greatest of starts, getting passed by Herrera. Now we're seeing Simon Engel shoot it down the inside into the Lacombe chicane for that position on Gaillard, and they're going to keep it side by side all the way through the chicane, but Gaillard has to back out of that one. Carlos Torres is looking for a position to make up as well. If he can follow the Williams through, and he does. Can Herrera even follow the two of them through? Looking for this position on Gaillard, but has to back out of it in the end. Bassett keeps his lead, already eight tenths over Rafael. And then the Ferrari of Daniel in third place, splitting the two Red Bulls. Givano starting to drop back just that little bit. We'll take a quick look at the tires, not the telemetry, the tires. There we go. A nice smattering of colors among everyone in the race today. And there is, ooh, there's Otto looking for a move on the exit of turn 16, able to make it stick before we get to the, the difficult to overtake section of Blanchemont side by side through that section that I'm talking about we go Carlson and the Ferrari just about making contact heading into the bus stop chicane we go then a couple people side by side and Otto has been spun by one of them unfortunately losing his Aston Martin and rejoining right behind Bradshaw might have to make a dive down the inside to not be last battle between Angle and the Ferrari of uh, Christian and they're going to keep it side by side into La Source, uh, not La Source, are they? To Eau Rouge. There we go. Good, nice, clean driving between the two of them, uh, giving each other space. Raphael now wanting to get past Matthew Bassett, but uh, does not dive down the inside of the Lacombe chicane. As he knows, Probably just going to lose a little bit of time to the McLaren. Wants to break away from the rest of the crowd. Has the hard tires, so if he can keep the medium runner in check, then he will be looking pretty good strategy-wise. He's got a medium runner right behind him as well. 
I was just seeing, yeah, someone looked a little bit out of position on the driver tracker there. And that is uh, the Williams of Simon Angle in the wall and has lost his front wing through turn 11. Virtual safety car is out for the first time today. And that's not going to be a whole lot of help to Angle who needs to stop and replace his front wing. Won't be able to do so under a full safety car. We'll be hoping for one later on in the race then. Just seeing some of the gaps form under the VSC. So being very cautious on the Delta is the Ferrari of Daniel, who I assume will be looking to uh, bolt as soon as the VSC is called in. Maybe catch someone napping up ahead of him. Got a penalty already. Take a quick look at that. Three seconds for Guyard, so that is track limits. And into the pit lane he goes, as I mention him. As does Angle. I would assume that's going to be for uh, damage if he's pitting it this early. Or is it just tires? Looks to just be tires. Drive through penalty for Otto as he uh, sped under the safety car, trying to uh, catch the Haas of Adam Bradshaw and is not able to do so. Side by side on the exit of La Source, not La Source, not every corner is La Source. Radion is the second of those corners, and the Ferrari of Christian is past the Alpha Tauri of Carlson. And retiring into the pit lane is Simon Engel. After that damage, still a little bit too much of a gap to overcome, unfortunately, after changing the front wing. So I was mentioning that the Ferrari of Daniel would need to uh, try and catch someone napping up ahead of him uh, on the VSC restart. It looks like he uh, hasn't quite been able to do that, but he's keeping in touch with the top two. And that's all he needs right now. Losing touch is Giovanno, already outside of a second of his arrival ahead of him has the second Ferrari right on his tail. So it's a huge battle between Ferrari and Red Bull here today. As Otto is looking to make his way past both of the Haases, uh, Bradshaw starting to drop back, and Darius the next one to be picked off by the Aston Martin, who must take a drive through. And Daniel looking to the outside, then to the inside of the bus stop chicane on Raphael, but not able to make up any positions there. Got plenty of battery to play with after that VSC. And who will be looking for a good slipstream down the Kemmel Strait. Yeah, DRS is probably going to be available as well. And he's got the slipstream already through Eau Rouge and Radion. I don't think he's even going to have to wait for the braking zone. A quick yellow flag for Bradshaw through La Source. Not sure what he's managed to do there. But uh, Daniel, unfortunately, not able to carry that speed all the way through the Kemmel Strait and has to stay behind Raphael uh, for one more lap by the looks of it. Carlson, meanwhile, gets himself past Christian in the, oh, the other Ferrari and uh, goes very, very wide through turn nine and rejoins P7, losing that position back to Christian as well as Carlos Torres and coming under pressure from Alejandro Herrera. So he's... Uh, not really put himself in a great position with that one. But it was worth a shot. Bradshaw once again finding himself facing the wrong direction. But manages to get his Haas pointed the right direction once again. And he has Otto right behind him. And I'm sure uh, ooh, the rear tires on the Haas are not going to be feeling very good through Poan. Otto is probably going to know that. <laughs> But uh, Otto just goes that little bit wide through Pond. Probably picks up a track limits warning uh, for his efforts. Seems to be a pretty low wing configuration for Daniel, if I had to guess. As he's gaining a lot of time uh, through uh, the quick run to Il Rouge and Radion, as well as the run through Blanchemont. Bassett's ahead, just maintaining, dictating the pace. He wants these two to keep fighting behind him so he can break away just that little bit easier. And Otto has uh, caused a quick yellow flag. He's dropped miles away from Bradshaw, who he was right behind. If there was some contact between the two of them through Blanchemont. Easy to do, very narrow section of the track. 
Beeler <laughs> finds a small gap on the outside of Matthew Bassett. And uh, Daniel is through as well. So Bassett down to third position by way of DRS, but we'll be looking to get those places back and already looking to the inside of Bruxels. Space given between himself and Daniel in the Ferrari, but they're just going to be losing each other time. Will Raphael even be able to pull himself away from these two if they keep fighting like this? Seven tenths is the gap, but I don't think either of these drivers is going to let that Red Bull out of their sights. Uh, meanwhile, this train right behind uh, the top, uh, the top four, rather, as uh, Givano starting to claw his way back, and he is indeed within DRS of Bassett now in the third position. So Givano uh, clawing his way up to the fight uh, between the top four. P5 being held by Carlos Torres, and he is leading this train down to uh, that is Herrera in the Alfa Romeo. Two seconds to get between himself and P4. So then, Daniel has indeed caught back up to the rear of the Red Bull ahead of him. He's on to lap six we go. Is he going to look for an early move into the source? No, he's not. Knows that you really need to wait for the DRS down the Camel Straight. I was almost expecting Raphael to kind of back out of the exit of turn one. But decides against it. And Daniel will be right on his tail, but Bassett seems to be much closer to the Ferrari than the Ferrari is to the Red Bull. That's a bit of an awkward position. Can Daniel get past? Looks like he's going to be able to, but will Bassett be able to get past? No, he won't. So he still stays in the third position now. And Raphael getting very, very close to the Ferrari. Uh, oh, and a coming together between Carlson and Christian heading into the Lacombe chicane. And they are both rejoining in P7 and P8, respectively. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot of damage done to either machine. But that is, uh, well, not an ideal scenario for either of them. As Otto comes into the pit lane and retires. So we are down to 11. And these top three really couldn't get any closer. Very much overlapping each other on the track map. So with that little uh, little incident between Carlson and Christian, we now have uh, the train that is being led by Carlos Torres is now down to two drivers, himself and Herrera. And these two, uh, well, they already know each other from Las Vegas. We know that much for sure. So I'm sure we're going to be seeing some great battling between the two of them. So Daniel in the race, lead Raphael, second place, and Bessa in third, looking to reclaim first position that he once held. And Givano just hanging onto the coattails of everyone ahead of him, picking up some DRS and some slipstreams, keeping him out of Carlos Torres' sights, as Carlson is indeed into the pit lane. Don't really have the time to see if that is going to be for damage or not, but I would assume so. Now Daniel gets passed by Raphael. Bassett follows him through, and he's just about made himself side by side with the Red Bull, but decides against a lunge down the inside of the Lacombe chicane. So Raphael up into first position now. Bradshaw retires into the pit lane as well. Short-lived race for him. Raphael inherits the lead of the race. Bassett in second place now. Daniel in third, and Givano still hanging on to fourth position. Herrera has gotten himself past Torres. Didn't see that on camera, but we see that now. As they now chase each other through Poan. It's a three, almost a four car battle for the lead of the race lap. Seven of 22, just under a third of the way through the race already. We get a nice view of the action riding on board with Daniel. And a big slide of the rear, a little lockup of the rear tires from Matthew Bassett as he tried to get his McLaren turned in to the bus stop chicane, but uh, doesn't spin, keeps it pointing the right direction. 
Just a little bit of a drift, didn't even really lose that much time. So out of the source we come then, and Daniel's just lost that little bit of time on the exit of turn one. Bassett's in a prime position to retake the lead of the race and get himself a bit of a gap behind. There's nothing really Raphael can do to defend against this one. Here comes Matthew Bassett to retake the lead of the race. And Daniel is far too far away for that one. Carlos Torres retaking P5 from Herrera. Now, is there anything Matthew can do to get himself a bit of a gap to the drivers behind? Because I saw on his steering wheel that he's sitting on a lot of battery, much more than Raphael, and plenty more than Daniel as well. So if he can maybe dump a little bit of battery down Blanchemont, try and break some slipstream, hope that Raphael and Daniel fight each other instead of him, might just be able to break that slipstream, and that is very, very crucial around Spa Francorchamps. Well, it looks like he's sitting on his battery and knows that uh, to try and break away now would be a little bit of a waste. Needs to uh, needs to spot a mistake between Raphael and Daniel and use it to his advantage and break away that way. Or just use it defensively. Keep P1 as much as he can. Of course, uh, being in first position on the 10th lap isn't quite as valuable as being in first position on the final lap. So it might just behoove Matthew Bassett to stay on his battery, keep it until he needs it. Here we go then. Another run down the Camel Straight is upcoming. And Daniel's looking a little closer to the Red Bull than he was the lap before. Whereas Giovanno and all this, he's still got a bit of a gap ahead of him. Pushing along on his battery as well, so struggling a little bit here today. But P4 so far. Definitely not a bad position to be in as Raphael is looking to retake P1 and does so on the inside of Lacombe. Bassett just has to back out of that one and Daniel catches up to the rear of the two of the cars ahead but uh, not able to make any positions. And Alejandro is once again through on Carlos Torres back up into P5 for that Alfa Romeo. All right then, so what is, what's the strategy looking like? Ooh, there's a little bit offline there through campus is Raphael. And Matthew Bassett going, going for an aggressive move around the outside of Stavolo. And he's going to just keep Raphael behind him as we head into Blanchemont. It's usually not a place we see much overtaking. Raphael's going to look for it back again, though. This isn't the best place to go side by side, lads. But Matthew Bassett staying in first position. Look how much time they've lost to each other now. Giovanno right on the rear of Daniel. But this might be what Matthew Bassett needed. Just bunch everyone up that little bit and hope they fight with each other. Little wheel spin on the exit of the bus stop chicane, though, for Raphael. Side by side between himself and Daniel. Daniel's going down the inside of La Source. They're going to keep it side by side between each other. This is exactly what Matthew Bassett needs to see in his rear mirror. So now Daniel right ahead of Raphael, who might have to back off just a little bit through La Source. Not La Source, it's Eau Rouge. And we just saw he did indeed lift his throttle that little bit. And now Daniel and Raphael will be looking very hard at the position that Bassett is in right now. I tried to go off board to see that three wide, but the game didn't let me. And now Daniel's back up into first position, Raphael in the second, and Bassett is looking to reclaim some positions. He's going aggressive now. Needs to get that position through turn 10. Bruxels we go. Sees that Raphael struggling on the hard tires just that little bit. And Matthew makes that move down the inside. He's not going to let he's not going to let Daniel out of his sights by any means. Giovanno is uh, still part of this. <laughs> I want to keep mentioning him, but he's just uh, just dropped the back of that a little bit. Playing it safe is the second Red Bull driver and doing a very good job of it. All right, then. Ooh, off for Carlson. Off for Carlson on the exit of the Lacombe chicanes. And we have ourselves a virtual safety car as the leading group is heading through Blanchemont. 
Will this VSC last just long enough that someone might want to dive into the pit lane, I wonder? If, if the VSC is still out when they reach the pit lane, and I assume it will, ooh, we might just see some of the medium runners want to go in and pit off of the mediums. It is lap 10 of 22, and they are in. As is Raphael Beeler, even. This is going to be an interesting strategy from the Red Bull driver. Ooh, what did they hit? I think they hit the, uh, the speed limit board. Okay, no front wing damage for that, I wouldn't think. Double stacking at Red Bull. Giovanno's going to lose that little bit of time. Uh, but overall, it's going to be a net positive for him as he's pitting under the VSC. So, hards will go to the end easily. We're halfway through the race at this point. But I wonder how well are the mediums going to last? As uh, the second Ferrari of Christian deciding not to pit under the VSC. Inherits fourth place for his troubles, but he's got Carlos Torres right behind him on fresh hard tires. And we are back to green already. Let's see how we are at the front of the field. Wondering how the strategy is going to go for Raphael. As uh, Bassett gets the DRS and past Daniel and back up into first position. So now Raphael's going to have the better, the better tires than the two drivers ahead of him. But that might not be the case at the end of the race. So if he gets back up into first position... He really needs to break away and keep the hard tires from staying with him. Uh, or else he's probably going to be overtaken even through some of the curves at the end of the race. Now Christian trying to fight off the Alpine of Torres as well as he can. Where's Alejandro in all this? He lost a lot of time through the pit stops. Not entirely certain what happened to him. Ooh. As uh, some speed differential going on between the two drivers on very different tire compounds. Now, Torres wants to get past as quickly as possible. Wants to clear that Ferrari that's holding him up. Just has to be patient. He'll get him eventually. Might even be down into the bus stop. And speaking of, our top three now. On their way there now. Is Daniel going to look for a move down the inside? No, he does not. How about Torres? Yes, he does. He has a look down the inside, but decides against it. Some aggressive defending going on from Christian in the Ferrari. So keep an eye on the tower for that one, whenever that overtake happens between Torres and Christian. And another round of the Camel Straight we go to then. Although a bit of a gap forming between everyone in the top three this time around. We might not see much in the way of overtakes. Uh, but Daniel's pushing along nicely. So he might just be looking for that P1 spot and indeed has the speed for it. And backs out of it though. Doesn't decide for a lunge down the inside of the Lacombe chicane. Does invite Raphael right behind him though. Raphael going to have an aggressive move into turn 10. Bruxels. Oh, he looks for it. And he just tags the rear of the Ferrari. We all saw that one coming, I feel. Although, uh, crucially, Daniel keeps his Ferrari pointed the right direction for the most part. Matthew Bessett, however, sees that there's a gap forming behind him after that mistake between the two drivers is exactly what I said he needed. And now he's pushing on that battery. He needs to keep Raphael outside of that one second zone. And Daniel's not going to be too happy with that one. The gap was sort of there, sort of not. Raphael was uh, sort of there, sort of not. Bit of a, a clumsy move, should I or shouldn't I? Half-hearted. We've all seen it, we've all done it. No hate, no shame in it. There's a quick yellow flag for Darius heading through turn 10. But uh, crucially, right now, Raphael is within that one second zone of Matthew Bassett, as is Daniel. Although he's pushed a lot on his battery, so he's all the way down to 35% now. Uh, but he's got that DRS. Is he going to have it down the Camel Straight, I wonder? Raphael's pushing along, trying to keep that Ferrari at bay. Might be a little sketchy, I think. Ooh. I th he might have just been within that one second zone. Through the DRS detection point. Yes, and indeed he does have it. Raphael now looking for the lead of the race from Bassett. And now on the back foot, very much so, is the Ferrari of Daniel. Although I think he's probably going to be able to catch the, the top two through some of the, the more technical sections here. As they're going to be holding each other up, giving each other dirty air and whatnot.
Yep, and indeed, he's catching a couple tents on Bassett, so... Gonna keep himself within DRS, but he's not got much battery to play with anymore after that one. Bassett, 68. 65 for Raphael, so... Uh, that little incident costing Daniel quite a bit, and indeed, he's lost a couple of tents, too. So Bassett may be running pretty well in the... in the dirty air. Raphael pushing along nicely, maybe. Not, not holding up the McLaren at all. Look at having to go to the button again is Daniel. He needs to stay within that one second through the exit of Blanchemont in order to get the DRS uh, down the pit straight. Not worth much is that DRS down the pit straight, but if he doesn't have it, he's probably not going to get it down the camel straight either, and he's got a tenth to make up as they head into the bus stop. Uh, he's not going to have it. He's outside of DRS. The top two might have just managed to break the Ferrari away. Though he's caught a little bit of time in the bus stop. It's going to be right on the line as they head into the DRS detection zone down the hill. And we'll see, he's just within that one second zone now. It's 0.9 and he's just leaving enough battery in... Well, the battery. Enough charge in the battery, I guess I should say. Still on the back foot though, and he's not going to be gaining a whole lot of time down the camel straight either. As Bassett now retakes the lead of the race as they head into shot through Lacombe. Ooh, Raphael with a three second time penalty for track limits violations. That's huge. That's very, that's very big. Especially since uh, the Ferrari of Daniel is starting to drop away from the top two. Might not be able to keep it within a second for the rest of the race, but I have a feeling he'll be able to keep it within three. Unless Raphael can do something absolutely majestic on the medium tires, get himself past Bassett, and break himself away from the Ferrari. Oh, I think it's a tall order. We've seen, we've seen a lot of pace through the, from the Ferrari. Always good to see. Once again, same story, different lap. Just over a second away is the Ferrari. As side by side, we head into the bus stop chicane. Raphael and Bassett maybe knowing they need to drop that Ferrari. And I think they might have just done so. And yeah, indeed they have no DRS down the pit straight. And they've got just, ooh, just over now. Two seconds, oh, there we go. There's a huge mistake from Raphael locking his rears through La Source. And that, once again, is exactly what Bassett needed, is he's now got almost two seconds between himself and the Ferrari of Daniel, who's got absolutely nothing left to push with. Now it's going to be, be between Daniel and Ra Oh! What? I would argue against that one. <laughs> I think if he doesn't pit and serve this one, he'll have a very good case to make to the stewards. Uh, Daniel just getting a five-second time penalty for gaining a position off track. Uh, we saw that really he had to go off track as Raphael was across the entire width of the track uh, on the exit of La Source and uh, forcing the Ferrari. Ooh, see, now that's not a penalty he's going to be able to uh, ask the stewards about now. So I would say even though if I go to the penalty screen right now, eight seconds for the Ferrari of Daniel, I would say that it realistically it's only going to be three and he's only going he's going to race as if it's three so this is this is going to be for position now uh between Raphael and daniel so the fight's back on between those two and all the while carlos torres is uh, starting to loom ever larger in the mirrors of the top two of the top three rather 1.6 seconds the gap between torres and daniel but he's within, he is within the penalty zone. That's the big thing. So if Torres could keep himself even within three seconds of, uh, of both of those drivers, he could be on for a P2. And that would be pretty huge. But he's got Giovanna right behind him. So he might just want to uh, be a bit of a menace to the Alpine and keep him three seconds away from his teammate. Second Ferrari of Christian finally... Uh, heading into the pit lane, getting rid of the 14 lap old medium tires down the camel straight. Daniel taking that position from Raphael. 
and further back, as well as Givano taking that position away from Carlos Torres. They've gained a lot of time, have uh, Givano and Torres. 1.5 seconds now, the gap. We were saying that it was around, uh, it was around, what, 1.7, 1.8 earlier on? So they're, they're gaining time, for sure. 1.3 now. Okay, Givano really turning up the wick. Maybe wants that P2 position for himself uh, instead of playing the team game and holding up Carlos Torres, which, uh, very nice. I like to see it. Although now that Bassett is clear in, cre in clear air and does not have anyone in his mirrors, 2.7 seconds the gap between himself and Daniel. So he's hoping he can just kind of cruise this one home. Raphael gaining into the bus stop section. Decides not to dive it down the inside, though. Just wants to be a little off-putting to the Ferrari ahead of him. But Givano has pushed along very nicely, and he is in this fight. Drags Carlos Torres along with him. So now it's a fight for P2 between... Oh, wow. <laughs> it's a little wide of the apex from Torres but uh, is probably going to keep himself within that one second zone to get that DRS. But uh, a fight for P2 between everyone from, uh, from Daniel in P2 to Torres in P5. Meanwhile, Raphael looking for that P2 position on Daniel and his teammate looking to join him up on the podium. And whew, Daniel does not want to let that Red Bull through. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, indeed. So Givano's back into the fight. Carlos Torres is in this one as well. Can we even see... Oh, it's a big gap between Herrera and Torres now. Still, I I'd like to see what happened uh, through the pit stop cycle, because it's not like Herrera could, uh, could double stack, because he doesn't have a teammate. But he's lost a lot of time through the pit stop cycle. He just uh, has not been able to get that back. So 17 of 22. Five more laps left to go here on Spa Francorchamps, But we know how long the laps are. So that's still a pretty good deal of racing left to be had today. So right now we are looking at a, uh, a podium of Bassett on the top step with Givano and Carlos Torres probably going to be fighting it out for P2 and P3 after penalties. Track limits penalties for Rafael and Daniel up ahead and uh, both drivers will probably be within uh, that. Oh, what, what has happened here? I didn't even notice the gap between Rafael and Daniel over a second. So now Giovanno's going to have a much easier time getting past that Ferrari. And he's going to hope that Daniel will hold up Torres just that little bit. And he's going to hope that maybe Rafael can still rescue a podium out of this one. Or at the very least, keep that Ferrari well behind himself. Giovanno, however, makes this a fight for position. And not a foregone con conclusion, as he's gotten himself a three-second time penalty as well. So Torres right now, the only run, the only one running without a penalty. And I think he he is outside of the window of Rafael up in P2. But if he can keep that DRS to Daniel up ahead and just get himself up to the rear of the two Red Bulls, might be able to take that position away and get himself up into P2. But it's a tall ask. He's starting to run out of battery. He's pushing along. He knows what's at stake. And uh, Daniel's not going to be the easiest person to pass. We've seen plenty of pace from him today. Hasn't really gone his way, has the luck. But uh, still running a very nice race indeed. We see Giovanno up ahead is harvesting his battery. So everyone uh, looking a little battle-scarred, a little war-torn. But Daniel has uh, gotten himself just within that one second 
margin of Givano. Still not much battery to play with after he had to uh, burn it all to try and get up to Raphael and Bassett earlier on in this stint. Now he's got Carlos Torres to worry about. Torres really needs to get past as quickly as he can as the two Red Bull swap positions heading into uh, the Lacombe chicane. Yeah, Carlos really needs to get past. If he, if he can get past Daniel and still be within DRS of whoever the second Red Bull is, uh, he will be in a pretty good position. But if he's outside of that DRS, we see how much time someone can gain if they don't have someone in their DRS right behind them. Uh, Bassa is the, the prime example here, who uh, is just about at the point that he could get a track limits penalty of his own and not drop any positions for it. Right then. So the race is on for... Tor what is that? Oh, that's Carlson getting lapped. Okay. Is he going to try and unlap himself? Oh, this is hugely distracting. Even though as a driver, you know that a ghosted car isn't going to collide with you. It's just, it's so impossible to, to not think about there's a car right in front of me. And we see how much time he's already lost to Daniel up ahead, who we know doesn't have much to push on. And Torres might just find himself out. Oh, it's another contact. Contact between Daniel and Raphael this time, once again. Well, first, uh, first it was Raphael sticking his nose uh, down the inside where it really didn't belong at turn 10. And that time that was uh, most definitely, <laughs> undoubtedly, Daniel sticking his nose where it didn't belong into the bus stop chicane. And uh, this time around, instead of losing just a little bit of time, Raphael has found himself well out of contention for the podium. P5 and three seconds the margin between himself and Torres up ahead. Uh, I, I don't want to say that was intentional, but that wasn't looking very good for, for Daniel. But anyway, I digress. So uh, Carlson has now unlapped himself from everyone in this little group here. He has a uh, Fresh soft tires, should have probably mentioned that earlier on in case anyone was wondering uh, why that lapped car is racing everyone that hard. Quick yellow flag for Darius once again through the bus stop chicane, but nothing happening there. So after that little bit of contact, Torres is finding himself... Uh, in a much better position, actually. That's one less driver that he needs to be within three seconds of. And indeed, he is well within three seconds of Givano right now. So running a net P2 on penalties. Between Givano and Daniel right now, I believe it will be four position. Bassett did indeed get himself a uh, three second time penalty, but that is uh, a bit null at this point. Wide of the apex through the bus stop chicane is Daniel. Bit of an angry driver right now. Just staying within three seconds of Givano is Carlos Torres. He's looking pretty good. If he can get past the Ferrari, that would be even better. He's got much more to push on. He knows he's got 20% battery and he sees the Ferrari up ahead is starting to harvest. The clouds are looking dark, but I don't think we're going to see any rain at the end of the race. Of course, lap 21 of 22, so there's uh, not much racing left to go. Just a couple more laps. Side by side into the Lacombe chicane we come then, and Torres up into third position on track, and well within the penalty window of Givano ahead of him. Uh, we're just hoping that uh, the Ferrari of Daniel is not going to uh, do a repeat of uh, what we've seen earlier in the race. What was it Daniel sticking his nose up the inside at turn 10? I don't actually remember who came off worse on that scenario. Ah, I already don't remember. But anyway, a couple of incidents between Daniel and Raphael. They have been uh, they've been running pretty well this race, but uh, tensions arising between the two of them. Saw some more contact at the bus stop just a couple of laps ago, and Raphael. Uh, very much so coming under pressure from Herrera, who is within the penalty window for sure, so doesn't need to make any moves on track. But um, just worth mentioning. 
We will be coming up to the final lap of the race then. Matthew Bassett has a three second lead over everyone that he needs a three second lead over. So he is uh, on his way to win the race in Spa Francorchamps. Carlos Torres looking at a P2 uh, after penalties are applied. As Juvan right ahead of him with a track limits penalty. And it's going to it's going to be looking for third position or uh, fourth position outside of the podium for Daniel here in this Ferrari, and he's going to look and try and see if he can make his way past that Alpine into the Lacombe chicane, but he will not be able to. So a bit of an unlucky race for Daniel, who's looking very aggressive into turn 10 once again. Look to the inside. Carlos defended it. Looks back to the outside. Carlson has spun himself, but he will be ghosted because he's on the wrong lap. So that won't be held, held holding anyone up. And Torres... Well, the race has really come his way. He didn't have the greatest qualifying. In fact, uh, how many places is he up? Four, four positions. So started in P7... And looking at P2 right now, so looking at a pretty good race for Torres. And we're just wondering how aggressive, how aggressive is Daniel going to look at the bus stop chicane? I have a feeling since he's dumping his battery, it's going to be very aggressive. But uh, we'll keep an eye on that real quick. I want to cut over to Matthew Bassett. I haven't really mentioned him in the second half of the race because he just drove it clean and far away from everybody else. That is Matthew Bassett rounding the final corner and taking the checkered flag in Spa Francorchamps for the win. And in second place will come the Alpine of Carlos Torres. Kept it clean and penalty free and reaps the rewards of it. Givano, who uh, maybe was dropping away from the top group uh, for most of the race, in fact, uh, does find himself with a podium. So a good run altogether. Uh, kept it safe and clean and got himself a podium for it. And it is a fourth position finish for uh, Alejandro, as I believe Raphael retired before the start finish line. So he is uh, going to be classified as a non finisher. Or at least everyone's going to pass him. He will probably still be classified as a finisher. Oh, fifth position for Daniel. But I have a feeling that five second penalty can be removed. So it'll be at least fourth position for him. But uh, that will be at best, I am afraid. Gaillard coming home in P6 in the second McLaren. I feel like I hardly mentioned him in the race. But uh, sometimes that is that is a good thing to not be mentioned too much by the commentator. And Darius in the house comes up. Oh, dear. Well, that's a little bit of corner cutting, my friend. <laughs> and uh, well, throws it into the barriers. A bit of an interesting race. Uh, didn't quite get the, the attendance turnout, but all things considered, that's a very good racing today. So well done, everyone. It was very fun to watch. We'll get the uh, we'll get the results and the uh, the race director after the podium's celebration. All right then, Bassett taking home a very clean drive to win the race. Torres in P2, Giovano finishing P3, Alejandro Herrera P4 for Alfa Romeo. Didn't set a qualifying time, by the way, so that's a pretty good result from him. Uh, Daniel, with a bit of a scruffy race, may get a penalty removed. May get a penalty added, in all honesty. Uh, Gaillard P6 for McLaren, a good clean race from him. Rafael, unfortunately, all the way down to 7th at the end of the race. Uh, the next Ferrari of Christian in P8, and then uh, Darius not really crossing the line, but still crossing the line P9. Here's the race director for anyone who wants it. And that's probably going to be, look very blurry on stream, but I don't have much time to go through slowly like this. Or maybe I do. 
who knows? <laughs> well then, a fun race at Spa Francorchamps Rochant today, despite the uh, slightly low turnout. A very nice job to everyone involved in this one. I'm going to take a quick look at the calendar. Where are we going to be next week? After this mystery Grand Prix is going to be Austria with two asterisks for a one-shot quality, 50% sprint, and a 50% race. That That is going to be very exciting. <laughs> Knowing Austria... Ooh, wow. That's, there's going to be the, the poor stewards. <laughs> the poor, poor stewards. But we'll be looking forward to it because we'll, we, uh, we have a very fun race to look forward to then, don't we? So tune in next week. Same time, same channel. We will see you in Austria. Have a good day. Goodbye.